much for still being with us here in morning at MTV. You do have about 26 minutes to the top of the hour, 8 o'clock. And as we committed earlier, we're going to be having conversations that do aid you and support you to leapfrog out of 2024 with solutions into 2025. I am. Zilla Regina Naruga. This morning our tech note is going to be focusing on loans. Can you afford the loan that is on the market, that is with your financial service provider? Can you even access it in the first place? So we're, so we're looking around the challenges that are continued to faced by SMEs as well as the solutions that be in the financial institutions that are available on the market. Backbone of it is that loans in the banking sector are very important topics for the banking and financial aspirants. You also do have the banking sector making up a crucial terminology for practical purposes. Of course, many Ugandans are surviving on loans to match up their business sustainability. However, there are some complexities in the topic of loans. And then also when it comes to the uptake of it, I've just have been having a conversation here with my guest about this. And uh, we were talking about uh, credit worthiness and how the realization that different loans have different credit worthiness. But many of us go to the bank with uh, just knowing that this is all I need. And then you get there and they tell you you need other complementary things to make your credit worthy for a loan. And you think they're simply against you improving your business. No, that's not the case. So this particular conversation is here to educate you on accessibility and affordability of loans. We do have uh, Johnson Gal uh, Galabuzi, who is the head of retail in personal banking. This is with Equity Bank that has been servicing you with financial services for the past 16 years to economically and socially improve your small and medium enterprise. Good morning to you, Johnson. Good morning to you, Prisla. How are you? Very well, thank you. Okay, so it's a pleasure to have you on this conversation. 16 years and counting, and so you've been part of the journey of quite a number of small and medium enterprises across sure. the country. Let's first talk about the growth realizations for SMEs. Well, um, SMEs have grown extensively as uh, we speak now. We have uh, more than uh, 10,000 active SMEs that are banking uh, with uh, Equity Bank um, amidst um, uh, the different challenges of uh, SMEs. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we have uh, gone in there to support them. That's why we partnered with our nation media group to look at uh, the top 100 medium-sized uh, SMEs for us to pick lessons from there and improve our offering uh, to a different uh, clientele base. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. In that being the case, I know that there's continued key barriers that yes. they continue to present on their side yes. as uh, challenges that they face in accessing affordable loans. Mm -hmm. What are those? Well, one of uh, them, the major one is uh, for starters, um, uh, the lack of uh, continuity of uh, uh, the different SMEs. We all know that um, a couple of SMEs uh, don't live to see their third birthday mm -hmm. or third year annual birthday, and it's because of various reasons. One of them is, uh, of course, poor record keeping, and that's what we're trying to address by getting to the SMEs, understand them, and show them how to do that. We do physical financial literacy training around that. We also do a lot of um, empowerment in terms of technology for them to be able to understand how they can work easily with technology, for them to be able to grow their SMEs. Of course, we have the high interest rates. Mm -hmm. We all know that the interest rates are also a bit crazy at that. And then uh, there is an issue of credit worthiness. Uh, most of the SMEs um, have not done so well in terms of um, access to credit and managing credit along the way. We also have a challenge in planning, uh, basically succession planning for the SMEs because most of them start out as sole proprietorships, but uh, they have um, grown and outlived it, but they still want to behave like mm -hmm. that. So we come in as an equity bank to try and empower them so that they're able um, to grow in that area. Um, Basically, that is it for starters. There are, mm -hmm. of course, very many others. Yeah. But um, for us, we really focus on how we can uplift okay. and uh, ensure that uh, they do better. All right. Better you you have talked about financial literacy, and yes. I've realized that quite a number of financial institutions have had to educate uh, their clientele in order to then enable them uptake yeah. the loan opportunities that do mm. exist, uh, you, you know, and utilize them extensively. So, in your financial literacy programs, mm. Yes. What exactly are you focusing on? Well, we, we focus uh, on um, 
for starters, uh, managing and planning uh, the SMEs, and then we focus on uh, the um, technical know-how of how they can be able to grow their SMEs mm -hmm. uh, to various levels. Uh, we also look at uh, their level of um, um, understanding and articulating what is supposed to be done around SMEs. Uh, we do a lot of capacity building, of course, for the staff, for them to be able uh, to be tech staff, to be able to understand how they can use money, to be able to see how they can um, uh, reduce on their concentration, for example, in the sector where they are, so that they can be able to diversify in case of any challenge of the SME. Mm -hmm. We also usually give them benchmarking, um, I would call them field visits for them to understand because some of them um, believe they're working in a vacuum and yet what they're trying to do has been done by somebody else or we have interacted with somebody who has done it better. So we also go in there, uh, we do networking events. Um, recently we had Tupange Business where we called in all SMEs, um, mm -hmm. told them uh, what is happening elsewhere for them to be able to improve their business. Yeah. So it's uh, more of hand holding and then ensuring that they grow from um, one level to another. Okay, well, Johnson, it all sounds good to the ear, mm. but I like to humanize some of these conversations okay, so sure. that someone can more relate to and say, maybe that is me. Oh no, that is actually yes. me. I need to find that yes. as a solution. And so talk to us about one of those SMEs that you have actually worked with, improved their literacy levels, mm. their credit worthiness, and they've been able to uptake some of these loans and grow uh, into a larger scale. Okay. Um, I'll uh, give reference to a school that we started with. Uh, of course, it was a breakaway school from a main school. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody had a dream to do their own school, and uh, they had to start somewhere. They were able to put up a couple of makeshift, um, I would call them classes and so on. So we, we came in, and uh, we shared um, a lot on how they can go to the next level. Mm -hmm. We did financing of the school. And as we speak today, it is one of uh, the biggest schools. It is uh, in Kasangati, uh, Nangabo. And um, they have grown by leaps and bounds. What we have majorly supported around the school is capacity building, uh, not reinventing the wheel because we have dealt with a number of SMEs. Mm. So what we have done, we've come up with an SME Bible, we call it an SME Bible, where we have experiences of different SMEs in particular um, areas. Now, mm. at Equity Bank, what we've done, we have a segmented and done different sectors. We have people who are in education, we have people who are in trade and finance, we have people who are in agriculture, manufacturing, and so on. Right. In there, we have different sector heads who particularly focus and understand from bottom to top around that sector. Mm. And that's where we get a lot of learnings that we go on and share. Of course, best practices. Uh, we, we leave out what has not worked well, we get in there, we sit with them, we understand their business, their uniqueness, because every business person is unique in its own way, uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. So we, we get in there, we, we are not like we are the ultimate and masters of everything at the end of the day. Yes. However, we share and use the experience mm -hmm. across the group. Mm -hmm. And it's not only experience from Uganda, because equity is present in six uh, African countries. We're in DRC, we're in uh, Rwanda, we're in South Sudan, we have representative office in Ethiopia, Tanzania, Kenya, and so on. So benchmarking on that one equity platform, the experiences that we have, I mean, we go in and share. Recently, we had um, a Uganda-India trade mission yes. where we brought in uh, different um, uh, entrepreneurs from India to try and see how they can invest, but also give our SMEs a learning platform mm -hmm. for them to interact. So we bring those experiences from all around the world and then infuse them into the Ugandan system. And of course, not skewing what has happened the other side to this side, yeah. we try and uh, custom make it 
to fit the needs in India. Because that's, uh, that's what's going to be my question next. Um, in mm. terms of, uh, you know, you've mentioned different sectors and each business must have a niche by and large. True. It begs the question, do you then customize, yes, you do have the services, then do you move ahead to customize according to the particular business? Yes, we actually, that is one of our specialities. That's why we've broken it down and gotten different people who are responsible. That's what they do from morning to evening. They breathe, think around that particular sector. Okay. And uh, they offer dedicated relationship management, um, you know, services in that area. We have developed products that speak to that particular sector. And therefore, the SME, if they're growing from um, one um, point to another, and um, of course, we handhold and we keep on training. Mm. It's not about only getting business and it's not only about lending to them, but there are other things in terms of financial management, mm. how they can make their money make money for them at that point in time. How we bring convenience to them, like uh, of the over 9,000 equiducas where they can bank easily um, so that they don't have to come to the bank and line up. When they have some money on their account, how can that money make money for them at the end of the day, not only lending to them, but in there, for example, the Digitoka Boxy product mm -hmm. where if somebody has money on their account, as opposed, for example, to fixing it and so on, we agree that, for example, you learn interest on it as opposed to it just waiting. As you build up your cash to go and import and, and do a couple of activities, it's also making money for you. Okay. Money never rests. Mm. And of course, diversifying. Some of them have over-concentrated on that SME, but we all know challenges may come along the way. And what's their fallback position? Mm. For us, then we come in and show them other sectors where they can also invest. Uh, we give them examples of people that have invested in those areas and they have grown without getting them out of their core business. Okay. We show them how they can definitely they can expand grow and their wings. Expand All right. Their wings. It then begs the question, have you designed specific clones or products or programs that are tailored just for SMEs to help them have affordable and flexible financial options? Oh, yes. Prisla, we have. Mm -hmm. We have a buffet of products that speak to their particular needs. If it is agriculture, the structuring is totally different from a local uh, business that is into trade and commerce. Mm. So we've come up with innovative products around that. We have working capital products that mm. speak to them. We have asset financing. We have a fully fledged trade finance uh, unit that looks at how they can basically save as they do business in terms of using uh, trade finance instruments like letters of credit, uh, payment guarantees. Priscilla, some people sometimes don't need to borrow money, but um, with our Ugandan culture, we like touching and seeing the money. So, for example, somebody who's going to supply, mm. we know that um, uh, their suppliers will take a payment guarantee. So you don't need to borrow money. All you need is a payment guarantee from the bank to assure your supplier that you'll be able to pay them after a period of time. And then they give you the goods, mm -hmm. as opposed to taking out a short-term loan. For example, you're paying interest, the goods have not yet been received, mm -hmm. and you have ordered, yet it would have been a payment guarantee where you're just paying quarterly fees or, you know, and uh, then a bit of processing fees here and there. Mm -hmm. So that's how we come in to advise them. And we have a unique way of doing things. We call it the ecosystem. What we do, for example, for SMEs, if they're manufacturers, we'll work with the manufacturer who's an anchor, for example, the big name, and then we'll work with the distributors for that manufacturer, mm -hmm. and then the suppliers to the manufacturer. Then we also work with the stockists. Now we've come up with um, um, a product like the Easy Bees, where a distributor doesn't even need collateral because one of the biggest challenge, like I said initially, is uh, these SMEs lack collateral. Mm. Until you work around um, uh, serving them without inconveniencing them with collateral, for example, in the ecosystem, we need not take collateral uh, because you're working with the person who's supplying, they are banked with you, and the distributor who's distributing to stockist is also banked with you. Right. So I will finance the stockist who will definitely pay the distributor who's seated with me and who will pay the anchor or the manufacturer. Okay. So in there, um, that's one of the products that is speaking directly to the SMEs in order for them you know, to grow.
their business while working with uh, Equity Bank. Johnson, how do you evaluate credit worthiness as a financial institution? Well, cre credit, of course, we, we start it with um, um, your rating based mm. on the Credit Reference Bureau mm. on how you've been paying. Mm. It is known nowadays that uh, if you're going to borrow uh, from the financial institutions, you will have a couple of um, um, uh, documents you will fill and it will go on your CRB. Now, one, we will be able to see your record. That's why it is very important for SMEs to continue mm. um, definitely uh, paying well. Now, on top of, of that, we look at um, their character, we look at their credit worthiness, we look at how the business has been moving based on their financials, um, how is their gearing ratio and so on, mm -hmm. and what is the level of management in terms of running the business. Okay. So the credit worthiness is uh, dependent on a couple of factors, but for starters, mm. is your repayment record for facilities mm. you have taken. If you have not borrowed before definitely we'll look at your financials we will see your receivables your payables for us to understand that but key to note is understanding your customer all right well Johnson as we come to the end of this conversation what's your commitment as a position financial institute to developing and growing SMEs in the country exactly one um, for starters I, I would like Priscilla to invite all SMEs that are available to come and test the waters from within it does no harm for you to come and see what we have to offer for the customers that are existing. Mm -hmm. We want to thank them so much for believing in us and working with us. We'll continue to grow with them. Mm -hmm. for, those, for those that are not yet on board, they are most welcome. Let them come. It does no harm for you to see what everything uh, is uh, on the table for yes. you. I want to encourage them to visit. Uh, we have 50 branches across uh, the country. Our head office is a church house opposite Bank of Uganda. We have dedicated relationship managers in mm -hmm. our SME yeah. that are willing to listen to them and then definitely grow their businesses with them. Thank you so much, Johnson Galabuzi, okay. head so. of retail, and that is personal banking with Equity Bank. Now, of course, he mentioned education earlier on, and we mm. did produce a report uh, last week as far as uh, school dropout rates are concerned in Uganda, and that rate increasing every other year. We do have Rashul Adid, who is on ground in Koboko District, uh, to give us what the picture looks like in reality on ground. Good morning to you, Rashul Adidi, and uh, he'll be coming your way right after this break.